this is the second step in entire surgery on uh, this 22 years old female patient with diabetes type 1 and very advanced PBR with vitreous hemorrhage, traction retinal detachment and subretinal blood which was never lasered before so we start our dissection of proliferation which appear to be a little bit better a week after injection of losentis and peripheral razor photocoagulation there is no so florid and prominent vascularization anymore but still we don't see any cleavage between between the proliferation and the retina we use different instruments like we started with membrane peak and knob spatula blunt instrument now in order to unlock the locked retina under it there are hundreds of connections that have to be cut and released and this case is inoperable if we use monomanual technique and it's very difficult to operate even with bimanual technique so we are changing different instrument various ones like membrane peak knob spatula scissors flute needle with silicon tip in order to solve the case but you can imagine what the impact on function gives long-standing traction retinal detachment with subretinal hemorrhage and with the shrunk retina under the thick fibrovascular vascular proliferation we are releasing the proliferation and just now we made the iatrogenic tear due to the firm adhesions which is not a big complication in such a case compared to the complexity of the case the plant excision is superior to the sharp dissection because they are very wide proliferation connections with the retina in this very moment you will see that proliferation is firmly attached to the retina and uh, in continuing of uh, removal of a membrane just now here we come to a part of the retina that is fixed and we make another iatrogenic tear we made totally two iatrogenic tears it is obvious now we have to cut this part which is not much compared to the complexity of the case and then we proceed with removal of the proliferation it is essential to remove entire proliferation on block because the risk of reproliferation in this case is very high and after that to stop the bleeding now we use the flute needle to aspirate the dense subretinal blood through the iatrogenic tear and uh, by that we flatten the retina a bit the last part of the proliferation is very firmly attached to the retina and is cut with the vitreous straight scissors this patient had the hand movement 
in pre-operate uh, visual acuity and after two surgeries and successful removal of uh, silicone oil three months after the surgery she gained only counting fingers one meter so if we think about cost benefit for this surgery as I said before it's very poor compared to the efforts that are made to save some of the vision in the young patient's eye so it is obvious that this surgery and the treatment of diabetes should be performed completely different way as I told you in uh, putting the efforts on prevention screening and laser in the proper time it should be not allowed to see young or any diabetes patient without any laser treatment with such a proliferative changes fortunately the patient had vision of 0.6 in the other eye and uh, already a proliferative diabetic retinopathy which is going to be stopped with the complete laser panretinal photocoagulation and lucentis injection after removal of the proliferation which is huge covering the entire posterior pole we can see the structure of the retina under it believe it or not we cut the proliferation and are going to spend some time to do the uh, metallicious and the diatomy and to diminish the risk of reproliferation in this case which is very high we use flute needle with silicon tip and the endodiatomy during this procedure you can see the optic nerve here and the structure of the macula temporarily of it and then after diatomy we flatten the retina with the fluid air exchange and aspiration of the fluid through the iatrogenic tear using two fluid needles one with silicon tip in order to massage the lock of the tear back and now for the first time we are able to see the structure which reminds of the normal retina there are pigmented scars of uh, panretinal laser photocoagulation in the periphery this central attachment of the retina give us possibility to do the central laser and complete the panretinal photocoagulation in those central parts first we will do focal laser around the connections of the retina with previous proliferations as much as it is possible because there is some blood left but we will start first with the focal laser photocoagulation around the pair that we made with three rows around the tear and then we will proceed with central laser photocoagulation here is the focal laser around the uh, other iatrogenic tear and then completing of the central panretinal photocoagulation 
as much as the case allows in this stage. After completing of laser, we will perform the silicon oil tamponade and finish the surgery number two. And after three months, we remove the silicon oil successfully, preserving the anatomy and improving a function a bit as much as it was possible in this case. So, air silicon oil exchange, which we perform rather than uh, fluid silicon oil exchange because air is lighter than silicon oil and fluid is heavier than it. And the tamponade with the air fluid exchange is therefore better. At the end, we collect the uh, bubble of air and the uh, tamponade with silicon oil is completed. Now we complete the laser under the silicon oil and solve the very difficult case the best possible way.